Hi, my name is Shams Nelson and this is the dry run for my uh, oral presentation for my art history senior, senior thesis. My topic is about uh, the motivations behind Chromayon parietal art. The Chromayon people require some defining before we begin. They are the people of the Upper Paleolithic uh, era that inhabited southern France and northern Spain or Western Europe. They, it's the Upper Paleolithic period spans a period of uh, 45,000 BC till about 10,000 BC, which is a huge swatch of time. But in that time, there was a great amount of similarities between the behavior and culture of the Homo sapiens that lived in Western Europe. These Homo sapiens are morph morphologically and uh, physically, mentally, very similar, if not exactly the same, to humans, to humans today, which are also Homo sapiens. Originally, the term Chromayon denoted a separate species of, uh, of Homo, uh, such as like Homo neanderthalus, Homo chromayon, but further, further advances in science and uh, understanding of the period has shown us that the chromayon people were the same species that we are today. Um, the setting for this thesis, the, the other thing they had in common, not with us, but with each other, to create, to be able to put them in a category, a broad category of Chromion for the uh, 30,000 or so years um, that we define them as such, is that the artwork that we find spaced throughout this period is remarkably similar, um, not just in its aesthetic appearance, but also its subject matter and um, what it does and doesn't show and its location. The subjects of these Chromayon parietal artworks are, you, are almost exclusively animals, and certain types of animals as well. What is interesting is that some of the animals that they hunted most and we would have been most in contact with are remarkably absent, not 100%, but not nearly in the abundance of other animals. The animals you do find there are uh, bulls and cattle, lions, Rhinoceri, um, those are prominent, oh, cave bears and bears, um, and a handful of other animals, but you do not find any reptiles, no snakes or reptiles, no birds, um, and very interestingly, almost no humans. The very few times a human is depicted, such as in the Shaft of the Wounded Man, uh, there's usually a anthropomorphic it's all. It's an anthropomorphic creature. Like it has the head of a bird in this in the shaft of the wounded man, as I mentioned. Or um, there are some areas that have the lower um, the lower half of a female, and but the upper half is either absent or morphed into a into a maybe a separate drawing, maybe uh, considered the same drawing picture of a lion or a bull. Um, so. These similarities, oh, and the final and almost most intriguing similarity of these uh, these caves is how they were painted deep in these caves, almost sometimes miles in that would require a very difficult journey, crawling under your hands and knees or uh, in the pitch darkness with just a candle or just, you know, torchlight, firelight, whatever they had then, but um, very poorly illuminated, dangerous journey, and... Um, we find this over and over in all the cave sites that they purposefully seem to seek out the darkest, deep parts of the caves in order to create these drawings, which is an enigma in and of itself. But my thesis focuses on the why of their creation and not the how, which is an interesting subject. But like I said, my thesis does not um, delve into it. So we don't really know that much about this time period because it was so incredibly long ago. Um, what we do know is from bone remains, the parietal arts, art that we find, archaeological evidence, beads have been found and such things. But it's really up to us to put the clues together based on a very limited understanding of them as they were and as they saw themselves. While it is believed that they most likely had language because of their symbolic thinking that is evident in the um, parietal artwork, um, 
we cannot be sure of this, and they left no written records that uh, we've been able to decipher unless these parietal arts are some sort of written record. Um, so it's very difficult for us to say anything conclusive about them. Everything in this thesis uh, presentation will be based on speculation based on the evidence, related to the evidence, but it must be uh, remembered that it's it has to be remembered that it is speculation and not fact. These are all theories. And I'm not here to come to a conclusion on the matter, which, in all honesty, will probably remain a mystery uh, indefinitely. But I will this I will continue to I will present the theories on why uh, why people might believe that this they might they might have created this parietal art. So I've divided the theories into two broad categories: practical physical reasons that deal with ordinary reality that is to say, uh, a scientific approach to it based on empirical evidence and um, logic that doesn't take in any sort of uh, uh, spiritual, non-physical, metaphysical reality. That's the first group of theories. The second group is the metaphysical, non-ordinary reality theories. These include altered state uh, that had to do something with altered states, religion, spiritual practices of some sort, shamanism. And um, these, it's interesting to point out that while a lot of people are skeptical of a spiritual reality, there is no empirical evidence to, um, to say definitively that there is no uh, spiritual unseen reality that we cannot experience through our five senses, but perhaps can be experienced in other ways. And there is lots of anecdotal evidence of people who have had near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, astral projection, Remote viewing, the government, apparently, the U.S. government spent a lot of money learning about remote viewing. So there are mysteries of the mind and consciousness, and perhaps other spiritual dimen or other dimensions that we don't have a, a strong understanding of. So it's important to keep this in mind and be humble when we look at theories involving metaphysics, shamanism, etc. Um, and also to keep in mind that even if uh, they these they weren't some people say that they are it's a delusional thing uh when you either hallucinate on uh uh psychos uh have like hallucinations of some sort induced by their plants or extensive dancing for instance or something like that um they believe they're just simply delusions hallucinations and that's also a possibility so um i'll begin to present the uh, basic theories, giving a very brief, touching on a brief overview of what each of the major theories proposed uh, are.